Uh, I gotta tell you, nothing beats a nice good hair. Uh, nothing beats a long overdue haircut. Well, for those that still have their hair or enough hair to you know get it cut. But anyways, yeah. Moving on, we got ourselves Common Rider Zo episode. Uh, no, zero one Zo. No, no. Wait, Common Rider Zero One Episode Four, Ryu Soldier Episode Twenty Seven, and Beast Morphers Episode Eleven. All right, starting off with uh, Aruto's continuing uh, reenactment of Tommy Boy. Uh, today he's uh, he was over overseeing a uh, uh, let's see a a, a tour bus uh, a tour bus a, a tour bus guy to uh, designated Anna, who uh, and their stop was to the remains outside of Daybreak. And uh, well, according to the official public records, it, uh, let's see. Uh, apparently, Daybreak Town was originally a uh, experimental city that was designed to cater exclusively to human gears, if I remember right, or if it was run entirely by human gears. But yeah, long story short, uh, the official documented report of what happened there was that uh, there was a server malfunction and the entire city was destroyed for the reactor malfunction. But yeah, we know uh, we know better. So classic case of corporate cover up. And yeah, uh, one of the kids that was on the tour, well, well, hit, uh, well his father was apparently the one, uh, was apparently the, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, the manager or whomever it was that was in charge of the system, and apparently was the one that, basically he was he was the scapegoat. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and Aruto, yeah, knowing the truth, uh, well, uh, at least a glimpse of the truth, is, well, basically determined to go and clear the kid's name and set the record straight. Especially since, yeah, Izu, uh, Isumu uh, basically thinks that Arto is just going to continue uh, heat on intelligence. <laughs> yeah, hidden, hidden, okay, you're funny, you're real funny. Yeah, hidden's, uh, well, corporate cover-up bullcrap. And yeah, since Aruto, you know, isn't a corporate scumbag, uh, you know, he actually gives a crap about people. So yeah, he's gonna basically, uh, he's trying to dig, uh, dig as much as uh, much dirt as he can to figure out exactly what happened. Especially since, yeah, well, we know that Metsubo Jinrai is uh, is heavily tied into Daybreak. Oh yeah, speaking of the tour, uh, the uh, the bus driver was uh, was tur uh, was turned into a Maverick Maggie, or uh, thanks to. Uh, uh, so sorry, I, uh, let's, uh, yeah, one, uh, yeah, you know, the giggling gun guy. Yeah, he was turned into a bat, into a bat magia, uh, and went on a rampage, which, yeah, you know, uh, it became the reoccurring threat, which leads to, yeah, Aruto getting, getting himself a new, uh, uh, getting himself a new progress key, the Hawk one, uh, since, you know, it lets him, uh, well, obviously based on the name, it lets him fly and deal with aerial threats. And, yeah, uh, well, while this is going on, yeah, Izu, uh, well, yeah, he sympathizes with the kids since, well, yeah, his entire life got screwed over by the daybreak incident, too, and, yeah, he ends, uh, well, willingness to, uh, uh, well, just bury the bodies and stuff the skeletons in the closet. And, yeah, uh, Aruto isn't getting anywhere with the VP since, yeah, again, the VP is a typical corporate stooge who, yeah, is like, yeah, no, we oh, oh we have to go uh, uh, cover up all these horrible things because it'll ruin the company's image. Yeah, uh, guys, maybe if you, if you stop doing this horrible, evil shit, you wouldn't have anything to cover up. But then again, apparently there's like some reports saying that most CEOs are sociopaths, so there you go. All right, well, yeah, uh, to that end, uh, oh yeah, and even uh, Anna, the Huba gear uh, that Aruto's uh, uh, testing out, uh, well, she wants to stake it in, in this too, since, well, basically as a tour guide, it's her function to have uh, to present the correct and accurate uh, information on the uh, places that she's giving a tour of. So to that end, uh, let's see, Aruto, uh, Isumbu, the kid, and uh, Izu, uh, well, uh, uh, they decide to go and... Uh, uh, well, break through the quarantine, uh, sneak inside of uh, Daybreak, and figure out exactly what happened. Uh, uh, but uh, apparently, um, uh, the place is swarming with Maverick Huma gears. Not sure if it's Metsubo Jinrai or. It, no, uh, um, yeah, no, they're Metsubo Jinrai Huma gears. Oh, oh, yeah, and in order to fight them off, Aruto transformed into Zero One in front of Isumu since, well, yeah, the secret identity bullcrap is complete garbage. And, yeah, it would make Aruto seem like a massive hypocrite if he was trying to expose his company's secrets while keeping his own identity as Zero One secret. And, yeah, that definitely does go uh, go a bit of a ways to go and earn Isumu's trust, especially since, yeah, he's still on his anti-Huba gear uh, you know, tinge. 
Though, to be fair, he I can't exactly blame the guy. If your entire, uh, if all of your friends and classmates, and just everything you that was you got slaughtered uh, by uh, by berserk robots, and the company that made them uh, just basically dismissed your claims as complete utter lunacy, yeah, I'd be pissed off too. Uh, but yeah, he at least still know. Uh, oh yeah, and spoilers: Mitsubo Jinrai was the one responsible for uh, for the Daybreak incident. Yeah, uh, uh, the leader, uh, let's see, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, let's see, Hattori, I think it was. Uh, no, it's not, uh, let's see, Hattori, yeah. Yeah, Jin was uh, Jin was Mr. Gigglegut, I forget. Yeah, anyways, Hattori and his common Rider form, actually, common Rider Hattori, yeah, he announced on all the servers that, yeah, Mitsubo Jinrai was the one responsible for Daybreak. Again, what exactly this serves as their ultimate goal? Well, I mean, we're like four or five, oh, four episodes in, so give it a break. And yeah, uh, this information was recovered thanks to a uh, memory chip that a destroyed human gear had. Uh, but yeah, uh, Anna inserted it into her, well, I don't know, reploid ears or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, uh, but unfortunately, the bat, uh, the bat magia was uh, able to corrupt her and turn her maverick. But she somehow resisted it long enough to go and display the uh, uh, display the recordings, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the kid's dad had nothing to do with it. He in fact actually locked down the uh, locked down uh, locked down the entire facility so that none of the Maverick human gears could escape. So yeah, the, uh, and yeah, at the end of the episode, uh, Aruto uh, yeah just uh, uh, displayed this out in, uh, out in the open and uh, yeah revealed the truth behind Daybreak. Uh, that, yeah, Metsubo Jinrai was the one responsible for, cor for corrupting human gears, again, and this pretty much confirmed uh, uh, Izu's trust in him, uh, Isumu's trust in him. Oh yeah, and speaking of Isumu, he also gets himself a, uh, he also gets a progress key, uh, let's see, the gorilla, uh, let's see, what based off of a gorilla, and yeah, it's got, ro it's got a rocket punch! A rocket punch! Really? That is so cool! Agreed, seventeen. Agreed. So yes, uh, more. Uh, let's see, more team building exercises. Uh, Aruto. Well, yeah. Uh, and yeah, Aruto once again proves that uh, shows that he's a good dude. And well, yep, pretty much that. All right, moving on to Ryu, uh, Ryu Soldier episode twenty-seven. Yeah, speaking of family, uh, they've uh, this. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Ryu soldiers managed to uncover the location of the uh, dor of the dormant Kishi Ryu. Uh, let's see, uh, Punch. Uh, let's see, uh, Punchigaru. Um, uh, but there's a bit of a snag, even though Gabu, uh, even even though Tiramigo, uh, when he freed uh, Panchigaru, he's not going anywhere until he finds his kid Chibigaru. Uh, well, yeah, since the uh, since the uh, since Panchigaru is based off of a kangaroo, he of course needs his Joey, which well, yeah, uh, the plot of the episode is uh, going around tracking down uh, Chibigaru in order to reunite him with his dad and thus add uh, his power to the Ryu soldiers' arsenal. A uh, slight problem, though, is that, well, uh, yeah, in addition to Wizaru and, uh, Wizaru and Camilo, and, uh, they still have the Minosaur from last time, Gachilius is also back! Yeah, apparently he managed to, well, how did he survive? By going into space! Because space. And while he was in space, Gachilius apparently met somebody that also wants to go and uh, go and smack uh, smack the Earth a new one, and he's not exactly up for letting that happen. And it's heavily implied that the person that uh, Gachilius ran into was Geizorg, who yeah shows up at the uh, tail end of the episode, and yeah, it looks like Gachilius is unfortunately going to be sticking around, although he uh, doesn't seem like he has much of a stick up his ass as last time, and yeah. Uh, but even his, uh, his professional, strict exterior, he uh, has some serious anger issues. Mostly just screaming and throwing a temper tantrum whenever, uh, whenever his plans failed. So, mm. Well, anyways, he, uh, not exactly a whole lot uh, happens plot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ko, uh, oh, yeah. Some, uh, some plot developments with Ko and uh, the other guy that was uh, in line to become, uh, become uh, Ryuso Red. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Ko is, uh, well, as soon as they could, uh, discovered the cave where, uh, uh, where Chibikaru was located, uh, Ko volunteers to go down there himself to make sure, uh, you know, so that Asuna and Moto don't have to. 
And yeah, there's a bit of arguing. Well, of whether yeah, whether it's the, uh, uh, whether it's they who work for Co, but Co yeah uh, follows the motto of a leader is the one who looks out for his team, not the other way around. So yeah, it's a little bit of and uh, yeah, that kind of shows why Co was the one who was picked by Master Red and not this other guy. Uh, again, I'm still trying to remember his name. He'll probably be gone by the next episode anyway. So. Mm. And yeah, that kind of comes back to bite him as soon. Oh well, yeah. While Ko was uh, busy uh, rescuing Chibi Garu, uh, Kachilia shows up and tries uh, and uses his arm, uh, uses his shoulder cans to go and try and cape, uh, collapse the cave that Ko stuck in. Uh, but he managed to go and get Chibi Garu out, leaving Melto to uh, return uh, Chibi back to uh, back to Punchy, and in turn they give him the uh, their uh, uh, let's see, oh yeah, the real soul. Uh, yeah, I, uh, mm, trying to remember brain. Anyways, yeah, uh, they managed to go and drive off, uh, drive off Cachilius. Uh, they managed to defeat the Minosaur once it finally grows, and yes, they have themselves Punchy and Chibikaru as a new, as a new punching combination. And yeah, it, it literally turns into a boxing ring. That is so. Well, well, you know, something, uh, something intentionally silly in a good way. Heh. <laughs> it's about time. All right, so yeah, uh, we have ourselves some. Uh, yeah, Guy Zork's finally showed up, and maybe now he'll actually be a tangible presence of the show. And yeah, well, uh, and at this point, the Druidons are just kind of just getting a bit redundant. I mean, yeah, there's probably going to be like the internal bickering between Wizardu and Gachilius with uh, with Creon stuck in the middle. Eh. But yeah, uh, well, we're, uh, we're we're halfway there, folks. So. I mean, it's been getting a lot better ever since the, uh, since the staff rewrite, uh, since the uh, staff change and mix up. So, you know, hey, at least it's no longer bipolar. And yeah, move, uh, wrapping it up, we have Beast Morphers episode 11, where the plot uh, to just, uh, this time, uh, well, let's see. Uh, well, during uh, during one of their confrontations with the Rangers, Blaze accidentally gets the, uh, the, uh, gets the Gigatron Maker destroyed, but... It turns out Scrozzle could just instantly fix it just like that, uh, which gives Roxy another idea. Uh, if, uh, if uh, let's see, if Scrozzle has the ability to uh, reassemble uh, you know, seemingly uh, irreparably broken technology, then obviously he could do it in reverse, which he uses to, uh, to create a Gigatron, uh, Gigatron uh, you know, ba uh, based off of a wrench, to uh, basically disassemble the Ranger's weapons. And yeah, not a bad idea. And yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, the main plot for the Rangers is that well, Nate has been working on uh, Giga Drone, uh, Giga Drone detectors, and so he uh, well, he creates several of them, which the Rangers have to go and spread throughout the city to go and uh, well, uh, yeah, well, they have to go and assemble them on site since well, at you know, different height elevations, different calibrations are required. You, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, one of the pairs that were sent out there were Ben and Betty. Yeah, you know, the comic relief dinguses that are uh, pretty much walking disasters. And, yeah, uh, part of this is, was that Zoe, well, she covered up for the two when they accidentally uh, broke Devin's VR headset. Although, to be fair, it's a VR headset. Uh, yeah, just wait a couple of months and there'll be like a newer, more advanced, uh, 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 more accurate model later. Eh, VR. I mean, yeah, she basically covered for them since, uh, since she knew that Devin would probably snap at the two. But, uh... Well, this leads to a little bit of mistrust since, well, thanks to the Gigatron, uh, it, uh, its attack, uh, well, which was aimed at Zoe's Morpher, uh, bounced off the reflection of the, uh, of the of their car and hit the and hit the uh, the Gigatron uh, the Gigatron detector. And well, yeah, since uh, Zoe was with them and she, uh, well, uh, she uh, later admitted that she was covered for the two. Uh, Deb uh, and well, Devin thinks that Ben and Betty just shirked their duties just to go and get ice cream. Well, yeah, it leads to, a, well, both of them kind of having their, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was nice of Zoe to go and try and cover for the two, but then again, it does exactly establish a line of trust if she covers up for them while the, uh, every single time they screw up, whereas Devin, well, um, actually trying to remember here, uh, uh, we're... Uh, well, yeah, De uh, well, apparently it tries to frame as Devin as being a little bit ju uh, judgmental, but 
uh, well, and yeah, you know, kind of quick to anger. But honestly, oh uh, yeah, he he trusted the two to go and uh, uh, look after his VR headset while he went to take care of Blaze. And the two ding- uh, uh, the two irresponsible dinguses when uh, uh, when and broke the headset. Uh, yeah, um, so basically Zoe was just covered for the two with their constant screw ups. So. Yeah, Devin may be, uh, I mean, it wasn't even framed that Devin was, like, uh, completely lost his temper or anything like that. He was just, well, he was just reprimanding them and just telling them, yeah, guys, what the hell? Uh, yeah, not even a way that was, like, over the top or anything like that. Just, you know, like, guys, I, 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 we gave you one job. One job. And Zoe, you, uh, you, know, you cover for them when they uh, screw up this one thing. What makes you think that we're going to keep trusting you for, like, the, uh, the, uh, the more important things? You know, like the boy who cried wolf and all that. But in the end, both of them realized that, well, they were both right and they were both wrong. And, 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 well, yeah, they just both apologized to each other. And, yeah, the end game was that Roxy managed to get, uh, uh, managed to get Zoe's, uh, Zoe's beast, uh, 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 samples of, uh, Zoe's beast data. So all that's left is Devin's. And, yeah, Blaze is not exactly looking good in front of Evox's eyes. So, yeah, it's a ri- um, So, yeah, once, uh, the next episode, we're gonna get that last, uh, uh, well, we'll see who gets that upgrade. Well, uh, so far, pretty uh, decent string of episodes. Z- uh, zero one uh, continues to show that. Well, yeah, it's uh, well. Uh, Sending up Arto is basically trying to well redeem uh, redeem the company's past sins. Uh, well, uh, yeah, basically it's it's Persona three with the Kir- uh with the Kirijo group scandal all over again. Yeah, ba- uh, yeah, that's that's basically what happened. It was Persona. It was Yukari subplot of Persona three all over again. And let's see, Ryu Soldier, they have themselves a new mech. Gachilius is back, uh, probably permanently this time. And Beast Morphers continues the uh, subplots. So, again, thankfully, unlike last year, hopefully I'll have less to complain about. Uh, but whatever gets uh, whatever gets me, uh, uh, what, uh, whatever people like more. Toodles!